Hey everyone, welcome to Liftoff, the channel where we provide SpaceX news and updates and also update you on important developments in the space race. In this episode, we have updates about the SpaceX latest launch, updates of China. But before we move on to the updates, please subscribe to our channel. If you enjoy your time with us, please like us and share. Launch finally! A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket carried 88 satellites into orbit in one fell swoop of a Wednesday, marking the company's second dedicated rideshare mission. The rocket took off from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 3.31 p.m. ET and flew southward along the east coast as it hurtled towards space. The satellites it delivered to orbit were from a range of government and commercial customers, including NASA's and Raider satellite company ICEYE, as well as three satellites for SpaceX Starlink Internet Constellation. After takeoff, the Falcon 9's first stage rocket booster, the large lower partition that houses the engines that gave the rocket initial thrust at liftoff, came back to land upright on a ground pad so that it can be refurbished and used again on future missions. The cost-saving SpaceX says its nets by reusing spaceflight hardware is considered key to making spaceflight cheaper. The booster used Wednesday was previously used on seven other launches, and each half of the rocket's fairing, the doom-shaped cap atop the rocket that protects the satellite during launch, was also used on previous mission. SpaceX is well known for carrying satellites, cargo, and more recently, astronauts into orbit atop its Falcon 9 rockets. But the company earlier this year began its foray into carrying rideshare launch for numerous customers, in which the rocket cargo bay is stuffed with a batch of small satellites that belong to a variety of SpaceX customers. The rideshare missions serve as a way for SpaceX into booming demand for getting small satellites or small sets into orbit. Small sets have been a meteoric rise in popularity over the past few years. They range in size as small as a smartphone to as large as a kitchen refrigerator. And as they grow more advanced, hordes of businesses have entered the market, promising to deliver service using new small set technology. Typical small sets reach orbit by tagging along with larger, more expensive satellites, and the waiting list can be long and unpredictable. But there's been a major push in the launch industry to cater directly to the booming smallest market. Dozens of new rockets companies are promising to build scaled-down rockets that can provide quick and easy launch for small sets. Two launch companies, Rocket Lab and Virgin Orbit, have successfully sent their downsized rocket to orbit and begun commercial operations. Baby Steps A 70-foot rocket blasted off from beneath the wing of Boeing 747 over the Pacific Ocean Wednesday, marking the second successful orbital flight for rocket startup Virgin Orbit. The plane, nicknamed Cosmic Girl, took off from California Wednesday, just before 7 a.m., and about an hour later, the pilot hit a large red button to cue the rocket's release from beneath the aircraft's left wing. The rocket then fired up its engine and swooped toward outer space as it revved up to more than 17,000 miles per hour. The rocket's second stage then completed what the Virgin Orbit called a barbecue roll, in which it briefly spinned to keep it eventually exposed to heat before deploying the ground of small satellites housed in rocket's nose cone into orbit. The company's first successful orbit flight came in January, and Wednesday's mission marked the first that was considered a fully operational, rather than test mission. The satellite belonged to a variety of Virgin Orbit customers, including the U.S. Defense Department, a Polish startup called Sat Revolution, and the Royal Netherlands Air Force. Virgin Orbit named the mission Tubular Belts Part 1, after the Mike Oldfield record that inspired billionaire and Virgin Empire founder Richard Branson to start Virgin Records in 1973. 
Branson founded his suborbital space company, Virgin Galactic, in 2004. An orbital satellite launch startup Virgin Orbit was spun off from that venture in 2017. Both companies still share the branding of Branson's Virgin Group, which has expanded into numerous hospitality and tech-focused businesses areas over the past few decades. Virgin Orbit is one of the dozens in new wave of rocket companies that has sued to develop small rockets capable of taking frequent, relatively cheap flights to space. Virgin Orbit, along with competitor Rocket Lab, are among the only such startups to successfully put the lightweight rocket they developed into orbit, and Virgin Orbit stands out among competitors for its decision to use an air-launched rocket, which takes off from beneath the wing of an airplane rather than launching. SpaceX, on the other hand, built much larger rockets than Virgin Orbit's 70-foot Launch 1 vehicle. But SpaceX did recently move to begin competing in the market for launch small satellites by offering massive rideshare service on its much larger Falcon 9 rocket. Huge Plans for the Future China's Space Administration has outlined its properties in space science, technology, applications, and exploration for the coming years. Lunar, interplanetary, and near Earth asteroid missions space station construction and national satellite internet project and developing heavy lift launch vehicles and reusable space transportation systems are noted as a major projects for the period of 2021 to 2025. China National Space Administration Secretary General Xu Hong Liang laid out the main activities and focus on the country's civilian space endeavors in press conference boosting innovation, supporting economics and social development, and engaging in international cooperation were noted as major objectives. In lunar exploration, the Chang-6 sample return and complex Chang-7 South Pole mission are to be conducted during China's 14-5-year plan period. Chang-8 to include in-situ resource utilization and 3D printing technology tests will follow. All missions will form part of the first phase of the International Lunar Research Station, project with Russia. CNSA is also looking to build on a recent success of the country's first independent interplanetary expedition with the Tainwen-1 Mars Orbiter and Zurong Rover, development of Mars Sample Return Mission and a Jupiter probe for a launch around 2028 and 2030 respectively are noted as follow-up projects. So far, our knowledge of the Jupiter system is very superficial and the detections performed are also very limited, said Zhang Rongyao, chief designer of Tianwen-1. The Jupiter system offers a large number of opportunities for scientific discoveries. One proposal for the mission includes a landing on the Galilean moon Callisto. Zeng also stated that technology breakthroughs are needed for mission. Everyone knows that, so far, no country in the world has been able to carry out a sample and return from Mars because it's too technically difficult. China performed a complex lunar sample return in late 2020, but Zeng noted that the challenges of launching samples from the surface of Mars were different from that on the Moon. Launching around 2025, will be a near-Earth asteroid sample return mission to small body 469219 Camo Aleva. The mission was previously targeted at 2024 launch, with a secondary target following the delivery of samples to Earth, last understood to be main belt, Comet 311P, Pan Stars. Not mentioned are a pair of probes to launch of the head and tail of the heliosphere, which is, however, led by figures from the Chinese Academy of Science. In human spaceflight, China aims to complete the construction of three module space station by the end of 2020. The Tianhe core module launched in late April and is currently hosting its first crew. CNSA also aims to enhance satellite application capabilities over the next five years, 
Goals include improving national civil space infrastructure and supporting ground facilities and enhancing Earth's observation, communication and broadcast, and navigation and position capabilities, as well as promoting and supporting downstream applications and boosting economic development. China recently established a company to oversee the development of a 13,000 satellite constellation for satellite internet. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. Please like us and hit the subscribe button so we can notify you when the next episode is available. Until next time, it's bye for now from all of us at Liftoff.